While Europe lagged behind in the building of complex machines during this period, engineering in the East was becoming even more advanced than we have previously thought. There was a really vibrant tradition of mechanical science in the early Islamic world, in total contrast to Western Europe of um, the 7th to 9th centuries. There were three brothers who led the development of technology and engineering in the East. They were known as the Banu Mosas. Influenced by the translations into Arabic of ancient inventors Philon and Heron, the Banu Mosas created a remarkable array of machines that advanced the work of their predecessors. The science of mechanics was generally known as the science of tricks. Because what one is doing, one is using mechanical phenomena to actually achieve what could have been impossible to achieve. The key was a highly sophisticated application of hydraulic technology. By controlling air and water pressure, the ancients were able to automatically regulate their machines. The precise engineering techniques employed in this Banu Musa trick device would lay many of the foundations for modern mechanics. This typical machine is effectively uh, to give you an intermittent spouts of water or a drink. It uses very cleverly two new systems which were introduced in the early 9th century. The first system is a ground conical valve which is used to regulate the flow of water. When the water is in the top tank it will go through a hole in the bottom of the tank like it is now doing there. In that hole there is a conical ground valve that if it goes up it would shut the hole. The second is a feedback mechanism that controls the timing of the movement of the valve. Because there is a siphon system in the middle tank, it will suck the water back into a smaller tank below. Now the third lower tank has a float. If the float goes up, then water will gush out. However, because it goes up, it will push that seating valve because it's connected with the seating valve, and then it will stop the water coming down from the top tank. This device, and others like it, demonstrate an amazing knowledge of the use of differential pressures. Exactly the same techniques are used to control mechanisms in everything from washing machines to jet engines today. We have seen an emergence of a civilization which has influenced our present day civilization enormously in our homes, in our hospitals, in our schools. And then even when you look up the sky, a lot of the stars are still named by Arabic names. In addition to hydraulics, we have intriguing evidence that the peoples of antiquity also had the technology to accurately calculate the movements of our Earth, Moon, and Sun. This was vital for navigation, religious ceremonies, and understanding the passage of time. One incredible device, first developed in Hellenistic Greece in around the second century BC, was to reign supreme for over 1,500 years. It was called the astrolabe. The Museum of the History of Science in Oxford, England, houses the largest and most important collection of astrolabes in the world. Its curator is Dr. Stephen Johnston. An astrolabe has been called an ancient pocket computer. Its primary use is in telling the time, working with the sun and stars, so it comes from astronomy. It can tell you when the sun rises, when the sun sets, or any day of the year, wherever you happen to be. However, it would be the Eastern scholars who developed and improved the astrolabe's capabilities. In the 8th, the 9th, the 10th centuries in the Eastern world, the instrument was developed, uh, new variants were devised which were more powerful, which could be used not just in one place or a small selection of latitudes in the world, but could be used universally. The portability and accuracy of an astrolabe made it something like a modern-day Blackberry of its time. This is the oldest astrolabe in the museum's collection, dates from the late 9th century, but it's more than just a calculating device. If I turn it round to the back, this is an observing instrument. And if I hold it up, you see how this was used to measure the height of the sun and the stars. I'd adjust that ruler until I was looking through and seeing the star through the little 